All right, ladies and gentlemen of the world. Hi, everybody. Okay. We are Bad Astronaut. We are the we are the most handsome members of Bad Astronaut that they could find. So that's why we are doing this thing. Um, so you got Joey Cape, and my name is Marco. I played bass in Bad Astronaut, and that's Joey. He's the guy who, uh, you know, he's the brains behind Bad Astronaut. And uh, fuck yeah, this is going to be rad. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> that Powered by Rock guy's got it right. Joey looks like he needs a Friday afternoon drink. That is so oh. true. Powered by Rock. You got it. Nailed it. And I am a muggle. Someone, someone needs to Postmates Joey a cocktail right now, if that's possible, from wherever you live in the world. Um, all right. So what do we do here? I guess we'll just read these things and we'll answer questions and whatnot. And, um, yeah. We Anyone have a question? Who's got a question for the caper? Or Major Marco. Or Major Marco. See, we were trying to think of astronaut names. And um, yeah. I was okay, kind of there's going a real the question. Um, there we go. Powered by Rock says... A real bad astronaut question. Was the passenger written in response to 9-11? I haven't seen a mention from you to confirm or not. Boy, I feel like I've talked about that a lot in interviews over the years. Um, although admittedly, there's not that many about bad astronaut. Yes, I wrote that on my couch at about seven in the morning while watching the towers get attacked. And um, it was crazy. I. I was living with our drummer Derek at the time, and he uh, he was playing hooky from life quite often, and <laughs> that was one of those nights where um, I was I used to kind of watch over him because he was in trouble those days, and he would just sort of vanish in the middle of the night, and sometimes I'd wake up and catch him on the way out the door. Sometimes I wouldn't. I didn't catch him that night, the night before the tenth, and uh, then he just called me. My phone, the house phone started ringing. Remember those house phones? The landline starts ringing. I answer the phone and Derek just goes, dude, the world's ending. <laughs> oh, that's classic Derek. Turn on the TV. So I turned the TV on and sat like anybody else and watched this horrific thing. And, and then I had a guitar in my hand. I just started writing that song. And that's how that was one of those weird, just, that was just a response. But then of course, later, John Cox, the beloved late John Cox got a hold of it and made all those cool loops and it yeah. turned into a real thing. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, someone, uh, let's see here. Well, oh, uh, Bart from Fat Set, tell us about the box set. So at some point, maybe we just need to get this over with now because I got this thing in the mail. I got my copy of the box set and I thought it would be like kind of fun to literally open it because I have not held it in my hand or seen it in person. I've only seen pictures. Thought it'd be kind of fun to open it in front of you guys. Um, so for those of you who've got your box set already, drop us a comment. Um, and uh, those of you who are who got the box set, who pre-ordered it, but have to wait until the, the next batch comes through, you get a sneak preview. And those of you that didn't get the box set, uh, I feel for you. And um, who knows, maybe there'll be some way. I like the fact that you're showing them a cardboard like delivery box. Like that's what it looks like. It actually looks like this. Oh, there you go. Spoiler alert. That's what it looks like inside. Yeah, we don't have so to wait see. for you to open your Christmas Oh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe, maybe Fat didn't send me the, the right box set. Let me just open this thing and see. Let me send you the lag wagon box set. Yeah, what if they send me the lag wagon box set? Then it's I could way box. better. If they sent me the lag wagon box set, then look for it um, on eBay in the next couple days and just under Marco DeSantis. And, uh, no, I'm just joking. No, right. What's happening here is we're missing a lot of questions. Yeah, we want uh, the questions just, to come in, but this is important, I think. It is. We but, have a fetish for like unboxing videos, you know? Like, come on. Look at this shit. It's like, whoa, man. I'm just going to caress this bubble wrap and rip it off. And then, God, how many bass players does it take to open a box? A lot. Look at this, dude. There it is. The bad astronaut box set. Look at that. Very nice. I, I'm pretty impressed, dude. Oh, it's killer. You got to look through it. Um, but it's sad because it, it is, it already was sold. And, you know, th here's the thing. Um, you know, we're promoting something that's already sold out. So if you got one, great. That's awesome. Um, I think it's a really quality thing and I'm stoked, but I'm sure it'll end up on uh, eBay. So, you know, and then the other thing that's important is that in a certain amount of time, I think once the box sets have all shipped, 
sort of second batch as they call it uh all these records will be available finally on vinyl individually um and so if you missed out on the box set uh, so you can all, make your all, own box set, guys. You can buy all the records separately, and then um, and then you can keep the cardboard box. That, but right uh, now, you're just like you're just showing somebody something they can't get, which is making me sad. Well, but I'm showing. There's also a lot of people here. Well, wait a minute here. Who got the box set and is just waiting for it to show up? Because I know a lot of people like pre-ordered it, and maybe it won't come for a couple weeks or months or whatever. So I just want you to see what you're. You have, and then the ones who didn't get it, yeah, you can get these things a la carte probably eventually. Um, someone from Fat maybe can comment and let us know what the real deal is because we're telling you a bunch of stuff. Um, dude, what do you guys think of the new song? Does anyone like the the new song "Wide Awake"? Because you can also get you can also listen to that on um, just like on you know whatever Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. Um, and then the new version, the sort of new old version of Violet, because we took old footage of violet and added some more tracks to it okay so there's a guy named ben there's a guy named ben julio that says i got one he's waiting yeah it's gonna be a while i mean things have been you know very slow with vinyl for years and years as far as manufacturing goes so these things generally take a while um but it seems to be being pressed because marco and i got copies yesterday so it must not be too far out there uh ben but uh but even still, I think, yeah, I don't know. Patience, my friend. I know how this, this stuff goes. But, uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Raphael asked, what about the armchair Martian split? When, we should put that, we should press that on vinyl sometime, dude. How do we make that happen? Yeah. Hmm. I hadn't even thought of that. Forgot about that. <laughs> well, I don't even know who owns that or where it is or... I guess owned and operated. Do they still exist? That label? I don't know. We should call. Uh, we should call Snodgrass and get to the bottom of it. Because you know he knows everything, right? <laughs> He'll be like, "Yeah, dude." Right now we're on Fat Records YouTube page, though. So yeah, you know. well, maybe we can get like, yeah. I think that needs to be. If if that label's not around anymore, it needs to get onto Fat so we can. Well, Buck. It. Let's see. Buck Lau asked how to boil an egg. He's stuck right now. That's it. Uh -oh. What's this your hack, Joey? Do you know how to do that, Joey? I boil, I boil water in a pot, and I just put the eggs in there for, I don't know, like somewhere between four and ten minutes. I can't remember. Well, wait a minute, dude. Hold up. Eggs. Do you drop the egg into the boiling water, or do you start the egg in the pot and boil the water like as the egg? Well, I don't know. I think it cracks if you do it the wrong way. I never care. The, it's weird. The egg gets in the water. It gets kind of gross, but eggs are gross anyway. So, you know, this is good. This is solid stuff right here. What else we got about food? Oh, but, dude, we can talk about food all day. Who's on drums on the new song? Oh, that is a good friend. Um, Kai uh, is an <laughs> Australian guy. No, I'm like, really good friend. He doesn't even know his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I literally like forgot his last name right now. Oh my god! Right. What the fuck is Kai's last name? I'll look it up. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. But anyway, Kai, he uh, he's from Sydney, and uh, Kai Smith. That's it. His last name's Smith. It's such a pedestrian thing that I I can't Smith. Anyway, Scott, Kai Smith, he's an old friend from uh, Australia, and he's just an incredible drummer. I think a lot of people refer to him as the Fat Rex drummer, because he does a lot of these videos where he plays catalogs of bands, you know, in a little snippets of the songs, or he does, you know, other bands outside of that label, of course. But um, he's just solid, really good guy. And um, we were kind of in a pinch. And I thought of him because I thought, he really understood Derek's drumming and it needed to be in the same vein. So thanks Kai. Um, but yeah, that guy's amazing. It's a super rare name. Somebody wrote. Yeah. Smith. What is that last name? Smythe. Yeah. Sorry. I don't speak uh, German, you know, okay. What else we got? When you record live albums, do you do overdubs and shit in the studio afterwards? Uh, what's a live album? 
that astronaut. Oh there my god. That astronaut live. That astronaut album. is the opposite of a live in the studio band. Um some of the things I do, I record live and then maybe you do some overdubs, but Bad Astronaut was the opposite. It was like every time it was a year of just cruising around with hard drives and just getting people to do stuff. It was more of a um, production project, you know. I don't think the band actually ever played once entirely together live. Um, right, Marco? Before we made any of our records, we never played a live show. We didn't play a live show until exactly 10 years after this record came out. That was when we played our first right. show. And we so never played a live show with Derek. Yeah, never played a live show with Derek. Or John. Um, or John Cox. Yeah, we, um, which is a trip. But, you know, from the beginning of this band, uh, some people don't know about this. Some people might not care. But it was Joey, me, and Derek sitting at a bar, having a couple drinks. And we just kind of oh. had this idea to, like, get together and, and just play some songs just for fun and just because we all had other bands and we just missed each other, missed playing music with each other. And um, we started playing and then we were like, dude, this is super fun. And just because we're all kind of like neurotic workaholics, we just kind of went like, we should go record. And then we started recording. And then, you know, the guy who was in the room recording with us was played cello, Angus Cook. So he got in the band. The other guy in the room recording was- We should answer the these questions though. I mean, they, they, the guy just asked, about recording prop, but there's all sorts of questions coming in here about oh, yeah. that astronaut. But, you know, some people don't know how Bad Astronaut came together, and it is kind of an unusual, unconventional band. So mm. the idea was just like, let's do this, but we're not, we're, you know, Joey's busy with Lagwagon and Gimme Gimme's. You know, we're all busy with all our things. So let's just be a band that makes recordings and not even worry about like playing live. And then 10 years later, we decided to start playing live. Okay, shit, you're right. There's a lot of questions. Holy fuck. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> What's Marco's go-to bass scale? Um, yeah, uh, throwing as many comment. notes as I possibly can, and then wait and look for Joey or Angus's facial expression to see if I actually hit ones that are in the scale. That's my trick. Blaze it, What Joey. band would be an ideal co-headliner with Bad Astronaut? Well, first of all, we probably wouldn't be able to co-headline with anybody. Um, I don't know that we built up enough of a thing, but who knows? Look at all you people. Um, I think in the early days, I used to think a band like Radiohead would be a cool band for that band to tour with, but I think we're a little more rock than that. And they, of course, went totally bananas off into the uh, the uh, electronic stuff. Um, so that's a good question. I have no idea. Let's turn that question on the people. What do you guys think? Who who do you think we should co-headline with? Uh, maybe someone else from another band that has a side project. That'd be kind of fun. Like maybe like whatever like who's who else is in a band that has a side project that's kind of different that'd be kind of fun do a side project co-headlining tour i don't know that'd be kind of cool um oh god fizzo fizzo is asking uh what happened to the split with the band log remember that i don't remember that yeah you remember the band log the swedish band oh yeah wound yeah what well, happened with that? After we put out Acrophobe, there was a talk for a while of doing a split with them because I they were on a comp that I put out on my records and we were trying to get something going with them. And I just think they were, I really just don't remember, but I know that we submitted five songs to the singer of the band who writes the songs and I don't remember his name, it was so long ago. And I'm pretty sure that he just didn't really think it was a good fit. I think he saw this picture on the inside of uh, on the inside of Acrophobe and was just like, I don't want to play with those guys. They don't I seem know, like look at that guy. He, they you don't seem like very play. nice people. God, Marco. <laughs> I have a thing about cracking my clothes couldn't, off. Just couldn't be a dude for a picture. Just had to pull your pants down. I know. And it's funny because like everybody else is so like, like, look how serious Angus looks. Like, Angus, is ah, just, you know. There's a good answer. Uh, Ruggiero, Ruggiero, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Uh, Murray said granddaddy. And that is absolutely the right answer. Busted. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what you're trying to rip off. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like one of my all-time <laughs> favorite bands, Granddaddy. And I think also that time they put out the Software Slump. And that album was just being channeled by us when we were working in Houston. 
there was a whole bunch of like god this is like yeah i i absolutely love that band yeah channeled which is a euphemism for ripped off <laughs> like there were so many times we were like oh my god we had to fucking do that that's so cool it's called that's, homage it's a yeah. tribute you know but yeah we were uh well at least i was really into that band at the great time. record the soft the soft software Where, song, song. right yeah, yeah so. listen to that like that's a, that's a great idea we should but do jason that. little he does this thing he i don't remember if it's on instagram maybe it's instagram but he does these little live uh streams every once in a while and he, not too long ago, I think he played the entire record just on piano and sang. And it was, I mean, the little excerpts I've seen from it, unbelievable. No, you gotta no, follow no. that guy. Yeah, you gotta follow that guy. Dude. He does these little posts where he's just sitting in his studio playing piano and singing. And it sounds like an incredible record. I mean, he's just, that guy rules. Uh, um, all right. Uh, are you surprised you were rocking at 50? Oh, like boy. how you said Ozzy was? Well, well that's a question for I'm, Joe, because I'm- Yeah, the, I'm only, know. I've only surpassed my statement by four years. I'm 54 now. So not really. I think when I wrote that, um, that lyric, I think it was really just sort of a, it, it's, it was kind of an ingest, it was a joke. I mean, I, what else am I gonna do? You know? It's kind of a sad day when you're the I'm the baby of the band and I'm about to turn 49. That's like we're we're kind of old, bad astronaut. Yeah. We're like yeah. we're really old guys. Yeah. That's I'm the youngest kid in my family and I I've been living with my parents since the pandemic started and it's I have dinner with my mom and dad every night and uh it's really lovely but every once in a while my mom looks at me and goes you're my youngest son, you know, child, and I'm 54, and I see the look in her eyes, you know. <laughs> you know, it's great, oh, yeah. great disappointment. It's a <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, at least if you're living with your with your parents, you get to feel young. You get to feel like the youngest guy in the room for once, you know. I All saw right, that. Tom, Tom DeLonge played drums on the new song. I, I saw that. That's pretty cool. Oh, Tom DeLonge played the drums on a new song, not the Smith guy. Okay. No, that's not true. Okay. We can give Tom um, credit for something, but not that. Okay, so what's going on? How Where the F is Joey 54? What a legend. Yeah. Joey looks exactly the same as when um, I'm, no. I think I first met Joey when he was like in his early, you're probably like 19 or 20 when I first met you, and he looked old then. So like he's finally like yeah I know I'm catching it's like I'm finally starting to be the age of what like how torn back I am <laughs> <laughs> you grew into it <laughs> oh my god what else we got uh, where's the gum Joey I'm, uh, are you still doing the Nicorette dude nope I had to quit it you kicked it this weird thing happened to me where I guess you know when you work your muscles in general there's something called lactate lactic acid that's created in your muscles. And um, I was chewing that gum for like 10 years all day long. And I started to get these insane jaw pains and my whole face would just hurt. And I went to a specialist and the guy's like, do you chew gum? And I said, oh yeah, all day for 10 years. And he goes, yeah, that's over. So I stopped <laughs> doing it. I stopped chewing it uh, about three months ago. And uh, you know, the first week, I think I killed a few people. It was bad news. Um, but you know, it's a really good strategy. Hot, for quitting. So it's not a big deal. Um, Joey, you know, it's a really good strategy for quitting uh, nicotine gum is uh, cigarettes. Just start smoking cigarettes. Oh, then, I did. Yeah, I did. I, I first I got patches. I got a little, I'm on the little one now. See that shit. Oh, shit. And, uh, which was kind of gnarly um, to get used to because there was no oral fixation going on. Yeah. That's a cool thing to say. And then uh, I got some of these, uh, I tried everything. I got these little lozenges to you smokers out there. These are the worst things ever. I hate them yeah. so much. But in a pinch, you know, it brings me off the ledge. And uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, someone asked the question. When I'm drinking, I just smoke. And I just think, it's all right. I mean, I haven't been a smoker for something like 12 years now. So I can have a cigarette every once in a while. Someone's asking Pfizer or Moderna. I got Pfizer. Me too. 
Pfizer. I didn't pick. I don't care. I just was like, who can give me a shot? Hurry up. I got and Pfizer, I'm but I'm... And for all you the anti-vaxxers out there, I mean, whatever. I feel great. Yeah, I felt great after Pfizer. My, my wife got Moderna and she was like thrashed for 24 hours. So I think it's yeah. time for everybody. You know what happened to me? The second what? shot, it was so funny. I was driving home from, I had to get it out of town. So I had like an hour drive. And on the drive back, I realized I hadn't smoked pot in a long time. And I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm high. I felt stoned. And then for about a day and a half, it was like, I just smoked some weed. It was almost kind of rad. Like it made me want to start smoking weed again because I was just kind of, all right, all right. You know, like that guy, it was weird. Yeah, <laughs> I, just got, I just got a little bit stoned from the second thing. I That's didn't get crazy. any of the really bad stuff. Um, mm. Will there be a new bad astronaut album? God damn it, Fizzo, stop asking such <laughs> questions. I love that guy. He's a great guy, but his questions are bumming me out. Um, I don't know. We talk about it a lot, but man, I got to tell you, some bands aren't, you know, great at like, we can talk a lot, but we don't really get there. You know what I mean, Marco? That's a nice way to say I'm just going to say, like, here's the thing, you guys. I've known this Joey guy for my whole life, and every time he's ever made a lag wagon record, he's confided in me that this is his last fucking lag wagon record. I remember when he was writing Trashed. He's like, dude, this is our fucking last. It's, it's going to be a good record. You know why? Because it's our last fucking record. <laughs> and then he said oh, the same dude. thing for Haas and the same thing for fucking Double It's every okay. single lag wagon record has been the last lag wagon record. I swear to fucking God, it's the last one. And I think that's maybe what's going to happen with Bad Astronaut. So the answer is totally and maybe and definitely maybe. <laughs> yeah, I like that question. Well, I'm going to ignore what Marco just said because there's, there's I, and very I, little truth to that. It's part right. of the process. That's how you come up with good shit, man. Cause you need to like, feel like it's so, the fucking one. You know? Renato uh, asked, why did you decide to have Mark Trombino mix the record? And that was Acrophobe. And how did that come about? That's a good question. Um, I I'm just was a huge fan of his work at the time. And in particular, this record by a band called Smile. Uh, the record's called Girl Crushes Boy, I think. Or is it Boy Crushes Girl? I always get that mixed up. But whatever, it's just such a killer record. And the sound on that record, to me, was exactly what I wanted Acrophobe to sound like. So at that back then, I was footing the bell for everything because we weren't even on a label. We were sort of on my records. We didn't really know what we were doing. And then we got an estimate from him, and it was like really expensive so we just did the ep kind of thing with him um and it, you know it was cool it didn't end up sounding anything like the record that i was inspired to go to him but for but i think he did a great job and it's cool because acrophobe sounds a little different than the other ones that we mixed ourselves but i you know if it's up to me i prefer the sound of the other records um they're a little less compressed a little cleaner i like the way uh uh houston sounds i think that's that was a that was good i didn't answer that question exactly but anyway mark trombino is awesome you know i mean obviously he was a the you know was, as a musician he was in some great really forward oh yeah yeah. Band. He was in Dry yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and he was sort of like a fifth member of uh of uh jimmy Eat world really right. because, you know he, he was, was great a great guy world. and i think he added a lot of stuff um yeah. I mean, that guy, yeah, he's, he's rad. Yeah. Okay, Joey, are you allowed to tell us what project you're working on currently? Fuck yeah, I am. I just finished my new solo record that I made entirely in quarantine or in lockdown. Um, I just finished it. I got it. It just got mastered last night. And I am very stoked on it. It, it, yeah. was, uh, it started out just like, okay, I'm not working for a while. I moved in with my folks because I couldn't afford rent like everyone else in the world. And um, and then I was like, what do I do? And then I thought, well, duh, I'll just bring it. I built a little portable studio here in my uh, in my room. And I that's it. I just started writing and recording and uh, it all finally got done. And it's 
it's pretty cool. It was really fun to make because I played all the instruments. I even played drums on it. And uh, I don't know. I hope people like it. It's not going to come out. You know, you make a record. It comes out like a year late. I think it might come out in August or something. I don't know. Joey, I'm going to be in Santa Barbara this uh, weekend for, you know, hanging with No, it's your birthday, my, guy. Yeah, my birthday's on Monday, but I'm going to come up this weekend just to hang. So if I cruise over to your place or you come over to my parents' place or whatever, I want to listen yeah. to that. Or let's go on a drive. I want to listen to that solo record, can well, I? Are you drinking again? Or are you um, still like sober kicks? Technically not until um, technically not until Monday, but, uh, but I, can, I can cheat on myself. So the Imperial yeah. opened and it's your birthday. And if your birthday lands on a Monday or a Thursday, technically the adjacent weekend is a bender. That's how that works. Oh, okay. So are you coming up tonight? <laughs> I'm coming oh, up tomorrow. Yeah, I'm coming yeah, up right. tomorrow. Check you out the really whole cool. world. Just like, hey, so you guys just hang out for a while while me and Joey make our weekend plans here. So where should we go eat, dude? So what are you thinking, dude? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's the other thing. I have a little song idea, and I, I was thinking, I just was, I've been on the phone with um, Tim Cullen and Mick Flowers because we're working on a Popsico collection. We're finally putting out Popsico on vinyl and a bunch of stuff Popsico related, our old band from the 90s. And we started talking, and we're like, we realized, I was like, I kind of forgot that I liked you guys, and holy shit, we need to do some more playing favorite stuff. And so a bunch of people are asking about playing favorites in this thing. When are we going to do some more playing favorite shit? We should. Oh, know, that's week. not what we're, why we're here right now. I mean, I, hopefully, I don't know. It's, oh, yeah. You know, Sorry, wrong, wrong side project. Okay. So <laughs> Matt Cade uh, asked a really important question that I can't answer. Cool. Um, what was that? Actually, I'll tell you what, Matt. I said that stuff on Drinks with Johnny, and I got in trouble with my friend E. Dagger. She got a little mad at me because she's like, dude, don't be saying that stuff. Um, it, it, yeah, we, we Oh, thanks. Move past that. Let's see. This really is an old crowd. Someone actually has the Popsico CD. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, and so, listen. Uh, I like that. Tim Collin. Yeah. More playing favorites. Cool. I'm, sc I'm scrolling back to see questions we missed, Joey. And I think someone was asking you about, oh, uh, now we're not going to talk about that band because that's another side project. Wow, we have so many side projects. Let's keep it bad astronaut, guys. Um, what else guys, um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, okay. Uh, oh man, bands back in the day, top three Nardcore bands besides RKL. Yeah. Well, we grew up in Santa Barbara. There was an amazing punk scene in Santa Barbara in the eighties. That's so, hard and easy yeah. at the same time. I yeah. don't know, maybe Dr. No aggression and I'm going to say Rat Pack. I'm not. Even yeah. though I love, love, love Matt, you know, yeah. he, was, he was one of my best friends. Just as um, far as like being there and like, you know, they, they definitely were a catalyst for like, you know, so they were in the world that begat no effects and RKL that, and so many bands that kind of paved the way for the whole scene. Well, yeah, I think of, um, you know, those. Yeah, I don't know. For sure. Aggression. For sure. Dr. No. Maybe ill repute. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Joey, here's a question for you. How was it working with John Popper? It blows my mind with the skills. Isn't that weird? The guy from Blues Traveler plays on a Bad Astronaut song, Our Greatest Year. So tell them that story. It's a great story. Oh, no, he played on one of my solo songs. That's what it was. And a Bad Astronaut song. Yeah, he played it. He played that. Uh, well, my wife, my ex-wife, um, grew up with him. And they were just really close friends. And so I met him a few times through her. And then he just happened to be in town when we were recording the first time. And... I don't know. He just seemed like the kind of guy that would be game for just doing something for no reason, you know, and because he's a real musician, obviously, the guy's incredible. And I asked him, I said, you want to come down to the studio and play some harp on uh, this band that I have? You want to come? And he just goes, sure. I couldn't believe it. He just said, sure. And then he came in and, uh, you know, despite the fact that he wouldn't record if he couldn't smoke, if he needed an ashtray and to be able to smoke while he was recording, which made Angus super stoked because <laughs> no smoking policy was pretty strict. Um, but yeah, he, he it was great. We got lucky with that one. It was just right place, right time. Um, you know, and he did like one take and it was like, okay, that's done. I mean, he just played this beautiful thing. 
Yeah, incredible. It's like incredible I, music. I have like I've like listened Ooh. to the, the harmonica solo that he did on on our greatest year. I'm just like Miss Yagna. So cool. How many little astronauts have you seen tattooed in your lifetime? From my friend Melissa. <sighs> Yakna. Oh man. So uh, that's a good question. No, I don't know. Um at least 50. It's gotta be more. A lot. The real question is why don't anybody in the band, why does no one in the band have that? Talk about the best team tattoo ever. I mean, everybody in Bad Astronaut should have a little astronaut guy. Like, we do. We each have one, you know? I don't have any tattoos. You do, you have one on your, um, you have a secret one on your, on the inside of your mouth. That's why it's called a secret. <laughs> <laughs> only my, only my private parts know about it. Yeah. Right. I got the astronaut on my privates. Yeah. Yeah. We each have a, we all have a bad astronaut logo tattooed on our body parts that only Angus Cook knows about. All right. What else? Uh, dude, did bad astronaut, someone said, did bad astronaut prevent lag wagon from getting too mellow or something like that? What was that question? Oh, I like this question, but what was the question? Here's another one we should answer. Did you have alternate titles for some of the BA albums? I love that. That's a good question. I have to think about it, but what was the one you just read? I don't want to be it. Someone yeah. said, did Bad Astronaut, do you think Bad Astronaut avoided Lagwagon becoming too mellow? Yeah, I do. Because when Bad Astronaut, the culmination of Bad Astronaut was really the uh, this, the period when we were, when Lag Wagon was working on Let's Talk About Feelings and I was bringing songs to the table like Owen Meany and piano intros and things like that, that I just really wanted to be on that record. And everybody in the band, Lag Wagon was cool about it for sure. But, and I think everybody dug Owen Meany, but I think there was a little bit of this feeling like mm, that this might be more, this direction might be more of a side project kind of thing. And, that was about the time I started playing with Marco and Derek in that musty, dank old garage that we used to rock in. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, all these other songs that I had that just didn't really work for Lagwagon worked very well for that because there were no rules, you know? Man, this is a hard one. Someone asked me uh, what my favorite uh, Joey lyric is from the Bad Astronaut songs. And, I mean, I will say without sounding like, I don't want to sound, I don't like, want to give Joey a big head here, but he's one of my favorite songwriters. I think important, listen, so. that's kind of a question that you, you know, this person doesn't know better. Some people are illiterate and, you know, you, when you ask that question, you have to, you're, you're, it's presumptuous because you're assuming that Margo knows how to read. Yeah, I don't know how to read, man. Why are you being so read? Why are you being so like educationist? No, uh, I think one of, um, it's really hard because I really do sincerely love Joey's songwriting just as a as a fan. And um, and I think he's a really strong lyricist. You know, um, there's certain lyricists like obviously Blake Schwarzenbach from Jawbreaker that where you like want to you can read the lyrics without even listening to the music and be stoked. And I don't know. I like them all. But uh, I mean, some of them I think are lame. But one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite songs and lyrics you've ever uh, written is Minus. I think that's great. That's like, that's something I'm like, you know, proud to play to people. I'm like, check this out. You know, I think, I think that's, uh, it's just really, really cool lyrics. But then he's got some really cheesy lyrics too. Like, yeah, you know, all I can say, what's that one where you go, all I know is that I'm stoked. That's my least favorite lyric, but also <laughs> kind of my favorite one at the same time. <laughs> it's like this tender moment in the song. All I know is that I'm stoked. And you're just like, mm. that was totally for Derek. Yeah, that was really kind of inside That joke, was for you guys. Of... That was for you guys. What else we got, dude? Um, come on, guys. Let's get some... Uh, Move the car makes absolutely no damn sense to me, but it's one of the best lag wagon songs. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, someone really likes choke. Yeah, that's a good one. Fuck. Oh, the Eagle Rock show. Melissa, were you there? That was a, yeah. that was that was probably one of our favorite shows we ever played of like the ten shows we ever played. <laughs> oh man. 
yeah, that show was one of the only shows we played. <laughs> uh, hey, Joey, what's your mom and dad's favorite Bad Astronaut song? You know, I just don't know that they've heard the band. Maybe. I'm not sure. Probably Violet, though, right? Because that's their granddaughter. I don't know. Could be. I, I you know, I don't. I think my, my mom, when I get a new record going, you know, I'll give her a copy just because, you you know, you always do it. Right. Um, sometimes she'll, she'll, she'll come through with solid praise, you know, but a lot of the time it's like, you're not a very good singer. <laughs> that's, that's like my mom's like, oh, great. Yeah, I hear a lot of repetition, a lot of 4-4 four, four time. That's what you guys are into, huh? And I'm like, mm, right. okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, we have one song in 6-8. Yeah. Come on. Right. Fuck. Um, yeah. Yeah, the parents will always, parents will always uh, bring you back down to earth. What's the story behind Derek's voicemails at the end of Acrophobe? Oh, oh shit. Oh, Gotta God. tell that story. Wasn't that sandwiches? Didn't he give us those? I, I got them all. I got the ones from Derek. Most of them were from my house. Oh, two, and they were leaving messages to sandwiches, right? Capra? No, 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 Jeff Capra turned in his messages oh. and I had mine. It's oh, a yeah. his answering machine and my answering machine. I live with Derek and Derek would call me, you know, from jail or wherever he was. And <laughs> if it was jail. a pretty regular thing, you know, he'd be like, hey, what's up? What time are we rehearsing today? And then it'd be all beep and it'd be like, that's it. I'm in jail again. Like, it was just so funny. And I saved all of mine and then Capra just by coincidence saved his. So I put them all together. But there was some real profanity on there and stuff that, oh my God, with the, the new cancel culture kind of scene we got going right now, which I'm not making any statements about that, uh, that you could not, you know. But the funny thing about that was that there was a bit of a slip up because I think way back when we made that record, it seemed sort of ridiculous enough that it would be funny and people wouldn't take it too seriously. And actually there was, there was a bit of a backlash. We got some real, um, there's some people very angry about those messages. And, and so we meant to take them off the record. Uh, in fact, when we mastered, uh, remastered for these vinyl records, um, that one slipped by again and it made the record. And then we had to remaster and re-cut the lacquer for that record. Like we actually had to double up on the expenses to remove it. So there you go, there's the story. And uh, that was just Derek. He had a very brutal sense of humor yeah but just you know he he is a very uh a, a very loving person as much he just had a very like snarky kind of sarcasm to him so it was right. kind of like you knew D derek could get away with that kind of shit because he just was you know he was kind of making fun of it at the same time as he was saying it so you know no no uh no harm no foul with derek um but D joey someone's asking uh let's see the What's this say? The Blick Dagger says, I've got an astronaut tattoo. Awesome, dude. Minus and Greg's estate are my jams. Caper, what is Greg's estate specifically about? Ooh, that's a long answer. Um, somebody asked if we had heard of Pup. Of course we've heard of Pup. They're a great band. Awesome. Um, I love them. Yeah. Ontario, Hamilton, I think. Yeah. Yeah, those guys rule. Um, I don't know where they're from. I think they're from there. I don't know. Uh, Okay, Greg's Estate. I wrote that song about this guy I grew up with. Um, I grew up with a lot of people that had problems with um, addiction, you know, and uh, Greg was one of those guys, except he was the guy you'd never expect. He was a straight A student and computer science guy back when it actually really um, was a new thing uh, when we were little kids. And, uh, you know, he was like the guy that, you know, super nerd it sort of seemed like the kind of guy that nobody would have to worry about he's going to be a bill gates guy and um and then he discovered drugs and um i didn't see him for years but uh i had known him really well and spent a lot of time hanging out with him when we were kids and i heard about how he died he overdosed he had a heart attack and he was really young and the house he lived in was like this sort of estate that his father owned that was on the beach. I mean, probably the nicest place I've ever been to in my life. And we used to spend a lot of time there swimming and when we were kids. And so I wrote, I wrote it about that family because the family story is 
exceptionally dark. Um, the dad, uh, they all lived on the property, the mother, uh, the father, and they were divorced. And then this other kid that was on our soccer team, me and Greg and this other kid played on the soccer team together when we were 10 years old, ended up dating the mom. And then the dad came in and attacked them in that house. Uh, and in self-defense, the kid I played soccer with killed the dad. And then about two weeks later, Greg OD'd. So right on drugs. <laughs> oh humans um, oh, humans yeah and it dude, was just, uh, it was someone, i just tried to write a little story about it and ended up being that song someone asked uh let's see um oh what's jessica suicide about well that's actually us covering an armchair martian song so you have to ask john snodgrass that question sometime uh but yeah i personally kind of like our version of it better than their version of it, which is kind of rad. We also covered another Armchair Martian song called Break Your Frame, and it's on uh, it's on Houston, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We covered a lot of songs. Someone else asked, what's our favorite cover? What's the favorite? The B-Man asked, favorite cover song we have done. So what's your favorite one? Mine's probably the Elliott Smith song, Needle in the Hay. Mine is, I think, Megan, the Smoking Pope. Oh, the Smoking Pope's one. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. I mean, the Neo one's cool too. I like, I like that if you do a cover, it's nice if you make it a little different. You know, the the Megan one is pretty much, you know, we did, did a lot of covers. We did kind of the same thing as Smoking Pope, so maybe maybe it is Needle because that's sort of like we kind of metal. Yeah, out if you bit. guys listen to Needle in the Hay on Acrophobe and then go research the original Elliott Smith version, like we turned the like sensitive acoustic song into like a thrashing like nirvana style song or something it's i think it's kind of cool when covers reinterpret songs I, I i like our cover of the posies um solar sister i think that's pretty cool um oh yeah that's yeah oh god there's a lot of people asking what songs are about specifically let me just tell you that whatever the answers are the answers are going to be really sad <laughs> um yeah i mean it's usually about someone that i cared about no longer being with us for some reason that seemed unnecessary. So let's leave it at that. Uh, uh, oh, you guys heard our cover of Linoleum. Yeah, okay. Uh, Houston, uh, let's see, what else, what else? Man, these questions are coming in fast now. Oh shit, I only get 10 minutes before I turn into a, I think I have 15 more minutes before I turn into a uh, pumpkin, I got a split. Um, thanks. You like the Neil, I uh, met Ken Stringfellow once. He says all anyone wants to hear at his shows are lag wagon songs. <laughs> oh, that's I pretty rad. Yeah, Ken true. Stringfellow is one of the uh, main, uh, songwriters and singers of the band, the posies that we have a lot of respect for. And Ken actually played in lag wagon randomly for a while. Right. Did he, was he on the double platinum record? He played guitar on that, right? No. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. I was so there's all these weird connections between all of us. First heard of Elliot Smith through our cover. Hey, happy to turn you guys on to Elliot Smith, one of our favorite songwriters. Um, Joey, we all like you for your sad songs. Mm. Please never cheer up. No, I'm just joking. They didn't say that. <laughs> um, More common, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> still a renewable resource. <laughs> there's plenty of heartbreak going on. Um, what are some, let's see uh working on a lag wagon bad astronaut book still got a few more chapters to to uh i actually was uh, working on a kind of memoir thing which when i say it sounds really pretentious but oh, there's a point where i thought maybe i should write down some of my stories and i started doing it i spent about three years working on that i got pretty close to a place where I could have started maybe putting uh, some kind of book together. And then I thought maybe it'll be a graphic novel and, you know, so it could be shorter and illustrated. And I don't know, I, I, I had a lot of thoughts about it. And then it, 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 this sort of awful thing happened. Um, I lost, I had a computer go south and 
at the exact same time, this external hard drive, this is before the cloud was happening. And I basically lost uh, three years or four years worth of writing, um, which is embarrassing to say because it's hard to do that. Um, but I did it. And, uh, and I've never really thought about going back. I've written some things for, I've written some prefaces and, or, you know, I've written a few things here and there for people, but I don't know. Yeah, a good title. Steve's book. You wrote something. Oh, that's me. right. That's uh, yeah. Joey and I both contributed chapters to a, a book about drummers that's coming out soon. Um, so we'll let you guys know about that through the, through the. Intro. Yeah, we both wrote about Derek. Yeah, well, I think specifically it's about drummers that passed away. Um, so questions. That guy's, kind of that guy's name is the, the uh, just to give him, you know, shout out. Uh, the author's name is uh, S. W. Lawton. Right, and the the publishing company is called Rare Bird Rare Bird Literature. So just go to Rare Bird Lit. Lit yeah, that. that and you'll I mean, I I got to read um, some of the thing. I think it's really cool. Actually, yeah, it should be cool. Um, are there any official Bad Astronaut shirts? You can go to Fat Records website and click on Bad Astronaut. And if you click on our thing, you see there's a new shirt right now that I believe has this as the artwork, right? Am I wrong? It's like something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but there's also Tempo merch. Tempo right. merch has, I think, a couple designs for Bad Astronaut. I mean, yeah. we're not really good about the merch thing because we did a little bit when we did this box set, when yeah. we put it together. So they're out there, and I know there there are there's some through Fat right now that haven't sold out yet. Someone asked, "Are we were we surprised that this thing that this box set sold out so quickly?" And the answer is, yeah. yes, we're totally surprised. We are still like blown away. I mean, honestly, this band was always just kind of a passion project for us, something we just did, and we were just blown away by the fact that, that you guys like fucking care about this band and tell your friends about this band. This band has only ever been a word of mouth thing, really. Like it's been like people hearing it and then telling their friends about it. Cause like Joey said, we didn't really ever go out and tour. And this is the most promotion we've ever done just cause Joey and I are home doing this YouTube thing. There's a guy named Lucas so, who's asked a question a few times here. So cool. Have you, have you guys ever heard the Spanish version of anecdote? Anecdote. Oh. Um, I don't know. Dude, it, drop it in the chat. I want it. I want to see that. Where it rings a bell to me, but I don't. I just don't know. That'd be rad if someone covered our whole record in another language. That'd be pretty. Oh cool. man, I have always wanted to do that. Mark Hoppus always refs bad astronaut. Yeah, um, Mark from Blink is a he, for for one of their whole tours. His like stage wear every night was our green Houston shirt, and he wore it every night. And um, they told us that our record actually was. Um, a big inspiration for that one record they made that I think was self-titled that kind of got more experimental. The record where they sort of, you know, made a little more of a grown up Blink-182 sounding record, um, had like Feeling This and a bunch of those songs. He told me, he's like, dude, when we were in the studio with, uh, who's the fucking guy who produced the records? That, um, amazing guy. Uh, unfortunately, he's dead now. Um, I'm so bad, I can't remember his name. Jerry Finn. Jerry they Finn. were making that record with him and they had our record in the studio as like a reference thing. They were like, which I thought was kind of cool. I was like, shit, that's cool. Please I know. Stop. I remember I went to the session to meet Jerry through him. And I was like completely like ulterior motive guy. Like I thought, you know, I'm going to meet Jerry. We both grew up in this town called Camarillo. And I was going to bond with him and then be like, so dude, what do you think about doing a bad astronaut record? And it was just that typical thing. When you rouse somebody in the studio, and especially a producer, they don't have time to talk to you. <laughs> I mean, the guy was like all into the session and I just kind of was yeah I never got there with him but anyway he was great he was a great producer that guy Sad. we bonded because oh. I found out that when I was a kid I went to a show at the a punk show at the Red Barn which was like a little punk how punk place you could see shows when we were growing up in Santa Barbara and I remember seeing this band from Camarillo called Regulation and Control. And it turned out he was the drummer of Regulation and Control. Like he was in that band back then. Oh, yeah. Small world, right? Yeah. But yeah, fuck. Um, yeah, Blink-182 would not exist without Lagwagon. Probably not. They'd probably admit. I, don't know about that. I think they were definitely influenced by Lagwagon. I don't know. Pop punk would probably not be how it was without Lagwagon. So it's all your fault, Joey. Okay, so let's see. What else? Um. Um, what else do we got? 
Dude, I love hearing you guys all communicate with each other. Did Todd Caps write any bad astronaut songs besides Wide Awake? Um, no. No. Was... No, that was the first one. And I mean, he's always written and had lots of really great ideas, riffs, and he writes songs. He's a songwriter. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he writes them religiously the way songwriters do. I think he writes a song here and there over the years, you know. But that one, I heard it and I just thought, ooh, that's that could really work and that's what ended up happening hey fat records dropped a link in the in the youtube chat guys for if you want to know about the shirts so grab one before uh grab one while you can uh would be nice to have a marco DeSantis one week record okay that's off topic but hey hint hint joey hit me up dude um, one tomorrow if you want to spend weekend. all day long on auto-tune trying to make it sound like i know how to sing then let's do it um uh, we got? how did you guys meet fat mike and get onto fat records <laughs> well we've probably both known fat mike from before fat records even existed because we all grew up in this little puddle of you know santa barbara and uh no effects used to play so often in santa barbara that you you literally couldn't get rid of them like every show went, my first punk show ever when i was 14 here, i went man. to see no effects lived here for a while yeah Right. No effects played on every show. My first punk show ever was Excel, Rat Pack, No Effects, and Legion of Doom at the Golden Eagle Pool Hall on State Street. Oh, shit. That's nice what are you doing? Why do you have to go somewhere? Um, my daughter's getting her braces off, and Ooh, wow. um, I have to take her because my wife's out of town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Total nice. like dad stuff, dad astronaut stuff. Nice. But uh, yeah, I know. I feel bad. But now I just told the whole world that. So you guys cheer for. Uh, did Marco? Did you sing on any of the bad astronaut stuff? I can't remember. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably why our record sounds so good. I'm not much of a singer, but uh, I can howl here and there. Um, dude, this well, is so let's fun. wrap this up, man. Yeah, uh, you guys, these questions. Thanks. Thanks so much, everybody, for showing up. Appreciate uh, hanging out with you a little bit. And, um, geez, I don't know. Uh, Sean, UCSB back in the day, backyard punk shows, you know it. That's how we all grew up, playing, stealing UCSB students' beer when we were underage and uh, playing shows in driveways. So somebody asked if there was any chance there would be a third round of box sets. And that is a question for Fat Records. I do not know the answer to that, but it's, I think it's somewhat unlikely because there's always this exclusivity kind of thing to these things. Um, but again, the vinyl will be available in a matter of months, you know, individually. And I haven't actually been able to listen to this yet because I don't have a turntable where I'm living, which is kind of bumming me out. But a good friend of mine who's kind of an audiophile guy and a vinyl collector actually told me he thought acrophobe, he got, he'd gotten through that. He'd listen to it and he said he thought it sounded really good. So I think we're stoked. Think, um, I if you guys have any more questions, I'm just going to put this in the chat. If you, and I'll try to get to these things, um, you know, if I can, you know, take a break from playing words with friends and, uh, you know, watching TV. Does anybody but, play words with friends anymore? I just started playing it again, dude, after like a couple years. And now I'm fucking upset. I'm like, I'm like playing like five games at once right now. And it's like taking up all my time. It's become a problem. Send help. I need an intervention. Well, I'm old, but I'm 100% yeah. against that game because dude, Scrabble, Scrabble, it's Scrabble, fucking Scrabble with strangers, Scrabble, bro. Scrabble is a perfect game. Did not be, need to be reinvented. And that thing got so huge, and I just kept looking around at everybody saying, <laughs> you fucking heard of Scrabble? I know, but Scrabble Come needs on. to be played in person. I don't want to hang out with real live people, dude. That's and that was back weird. when the bass player Joe Raposo was working for Zynga, who made it, uh, who made Words with Friends. Oh, and shit. He, and he's, yeah, he's in Live Wagon. And I'd be drunk on tour and look at him, and I'd be like, Words with Friends. Scrabble is to sex, but Words with Friends is to Pornhub, dude. Come on. Man. All right. So if you have more, so I'm putting this in the chat for you guys. If you have more questions for me, you can hit me up. You can D slide into my DMs, as the kids say, on the Instagram. Okay. Um, 
Oh my God, that whole sentence sucks. So yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to sound like I'm down with the kids. Okay. Hate it. Uh, I hate you right now. <laughs> up on. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. But before you go, Marco, this is important. Okay. You are coming up here. Yeah. Okay. So what time are you going to be here? Because I'm trying to make plans. Well, why you want to take me out to dinner for my birthday or something? I'll take you to Imperial. Oh. One okay. of those nights, you should go with me to Donald's bar and we'll have some drinks. It'll be great. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, you can either meet me and Joey to, uh, tomorrow night at the Imperial in uh, Goleta. So it's um, Imperial. It's right, right off Hollister. Get off of the Patterson. Yeah, Hollister and, and Kellogg. Yeah, go to Let's the go Imperial. Bar. It used to be called the Back Door. It used to be like a clandestine dive bar, and now it's this really cool yeah, bar. Yeah, it's sort of like a speakeasy, but it's really nice. Yeah. So, so meet us there. You can ask us questions in person while we drink. Or you can go to Instagram and uh, hit us up there. Um, right, Joey? All right. Answer yeah. all your Instagram DMs. Um, yeah. So I think that'll work. Well, everybody, love you all for showing up. This has been really fun, actually. But if Marco leaves, he does the talking. I well, I, I'm going to go, but you guys can still talk to Joey and just like, you know, he wants to hang out. Like, Joey, you're going to hang out for like two more hours, right? Uh, no. Come I'm on, not. your daughter already got her braces taken off. You don't have an excuse. I want to go celebrate. <laughs> awesome. Hey, yay. Happy Bad Astronaut box set release to all of you who got the Bad Astronaut box set. Thanks for your support. That's insane that you guys did this. And it's really cool. I'm really proud of it and super stoked. Proud of this band. Proud of this weird little like worldwide community of Bad Astronaut peeps that we've kind of come up with and it's just rad you guys thanks so much cheers from france oh my god that's awesome just suis un enculé uh what else fuck yeah thank you guys so much um joey let's hang if we get wasted enough on t tomorrow night maybe we'll make a new bad astronaut record i don't know yeah let's have some tricks they have these great booths there it'll be killer let's do that for sure okay buddy be okay safe. that sounds great that sounds All right. great Love everybody. Right. Thanks Take for coming, guys.